we warmly want to welcome all of you to our midweek meeting. And it's nice that we are all here to get started together. Very nice meeting for this evening, so we all can look forward to it. To get started, we would like to stand, please, and sing together song 103, entitled Shepherd's Gift in Men, based on Ephesians chapter 4, verse number so uh, what is it that we look forward to gleaning, getting from our meeting today? Now, if you take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 18, it talks about the bow. What is it? And what was it about, and what can we learn from it? David referred to Jonathan as my brother, why did he use that expression and what it means? In our Bible study, it, it talks about sorting. But here's a thought. What simple truth did she learn that made her to become a servant of Jehovah? So you can see that our meeting for this evening will be very, very beneficial. So we have different parts in our meeting, and all of you who have prepared, we no doubt are glad to listen and benefit from your instruction. So we will just go directly into the first part. Uh, that's uh, looking for good, good things, sorry, good, good lesson from the Bible. And we will now give the t attention to what thing we can learn from the from the bow. We will call on our speaker, that's George Bangula, for this uh, now's part. To begin this talk, let's watch the video that is called The Me Idea Inside the Book of Second Samuel. Let's watch, please. Me are there inside the book of 2 Samuel. When they were putting the first Hebrew book together, they made first and second Samuel to be one book. That the prophet Gar and Nathan finished the writing of 1 Samuel. And that they won't write 2 Samuel. They both talk about things then that happened over some 37 years, starting from 1077 to 1040 BCE, when they finished writing this book. They started writing 2 Samuel right after King Saul died, and they finished with it just before King David could die. They both tell us the truth about David's own life story, and how he fell hard to serve Jehovah with his whole heart. In chapter 1, David got bad news about how Saul and his son Jonathan died in the war. The news break David's heart. So he made one funeral song they call the bow. We can divide the book of 2 Samuel in two parts. Chapter 2 to 4 talk about the time David was king over Judah. And chapter 5 to 24 talk about the time he was ruling over Israel. Chapter 2 tell us about how David went to Hebron, where they made him king over the tribe of Judah. Then Abnon the chief of Saul army makes Saul's son Ishbosheth king over the other trap. Chapter 3 and 4 tell us about how they kill Abnon and Ishbosheth. The following chapters show how the people make David king over all Israel. Then David captured the Jebusite city called Zion and make it a capital city instead of Hebron. So they named Zion the city of David. In chapter 6, David brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. In chapter 7, David told Nathan he wanted to build one house or temple for Jehovah. But Jehovah said that David's son would build that house. But because Jehovah loved David, he made agreement with him for a kingdom that would last forever. Chapter 8 and 10 tell all about the victory David win over the Amalekites 
Moabites, Philistines, and his other enemy them. Chapter 11 tells about one of the bad mistakes David made in his life. He went and slept with Bathsheba and pregnant her. Then he sent her husband Uriah to the battlefront so they can kill him. In chapter 12, Jehovah sent Nathan to talk to David about the bad thing he did. Nathan also tell David about the trouble that will come on his family. First, he say the child that Bathsheba was pregnant with would die. After David married Bathsheba, she got pregnant again and born Solomon. In chapter 13 to 18, all the trouble Jehovah talked about started happening. David's son Absalom started looking for a way to overthrow his power and become king after him. In chapter 18, David men and defeated Absalom, and Joab killed Absalom. You know, yearly one before, the book of 2 Samuel that one good example to show that the Bible can always talk the truth. It even talk about the mistakes the leader them in Israel made. We also see that when we repent from our sin, even though we reap what we sow, God can forgive us. In chapter 23, David humbly said that the Spirit of Jehovah spoke to me. A war was on my tongue. In chapter 24, David decided to count the people. That bad idea made Jehovah verse and Jehovah brought sickness on the people. The prophet God encouraged David to buy the treasure flow of Arana the Jebusite and build one altar there and make sacrifice to God. Then, Jehovah stopped the sickness that was killing the people. When you be reading 2 Samuel, see the honest way God prophet then write the history of Israel. See how when we sin, it can lead to bad result. And notice the promise Jehovah made to give David a lasting kingdom. That promise was fulfilled through Jesus Christ, the son of David, the king of God's kingdom. This video of 2 Samuel that we just see about the book, it talk about the life of David. It also talk about how David received counsel from Nathan. But it also talk about how David put his hand on his son Solomon to build a temple for Jehovah and how Solomon himself ruled over Israel. But the talk that we're coming to listen to, it begins from the first book or the first chapter of Second Samuel. This first chapter is a funeral song. What we can learn from inside this song? What is the name of this song? Well, please turn your Bible to 2 Samuel chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. Let's learn the name of this song. Then David chanted this dread over Saul and his son Jonathan, and said that the people of Judah should be taught the dread called the book, the bull, which is written in the book of Jesha. What is the name of this song? It's called the bull. Now, this song that we just look at, that David tell the people to sing, it comes from a book that they write way back in the time of the Israelites. Well, it's agreed that this book was a book that had poems, songs, and other writing. So it is true that from in the same book too, David also 
let the people to sing this funeral song for Saul and Jonathan. But why did David tell the people to sing a song for Jonathan and his father Saul? Well, let's go to verses 23 and 24. Saul and Jonathan be loved and cherished during their life. And in death, they were not separated. Swifter than the eagles they were. Mightier than the lions, O daughters of Israel. Weep over Saul, who clothes you in sackcloth and finery. Who put gold ornaments upon your clothing. In these two verses, David tell the Israelites to cry bitterly for Saul and Jonathan. Why? It says they were people who they love. They love Israel. He compared them to people mightier than lions, strong in fighting. Now, this crying that David tells the people to cry over Saul and Jonathan can teach us a lesson. What is that lesson? The lesson is to show respect for people in authority. Now, why we say so? Well, we could say if the time that Saul and died mainly for Saul, Jonathan could be, David could be ha happy, rather. But instead, David was crying over Saul, who was Jehovah's anointed king, who died. What that showed to us, that if people in authority do bad to us, or doing bad to us, and we're trying our best to do good, we should not pray for them to receive bad. We should stay respect them. And lead them in the hands of Jehovah. So the lesson we learn from this first part of Second Samuel chapter 1 verses 17 and 18 about the song of the bull is respect people in authority. Let's go to the second lesson. Now this second lesson have to do with how we can show that we are loyal to our friends. Let's see what lesson we can learn from it as we read 2 Samuel chapter 1, verses 25 and 26. How the mighty have fallen in battle. Jonathan lies slim upon your high places. I am distressed over you, my brother Jonathan. You were very dear to me. More wonderful was your love to me than the love of women. What did make David to say these fine words about Jonathan? Well, Jonathan was someone who stick to David. How we know? Well, the Watchtower of 2012, it says this about David and Jonathan, that we can learn five things that Jonathan do to show that he was loyal to David. One, Jonathan respect. Jehovah's decision for choosing David as king over him. Two, because Jonathan was not a king, he was not jealous over David, and he not made David his enemy. Three, Jonathan put his whole heart in supporting David as being king. And in fact, he even told David that I will keep loyal to you. The fourth one, to show that Jonathan Hand was behind David being king, he gave David an honor, make David to be honorable by giving him a garment, a sword, a bow, a belt to make him look honorable among the king's army. The fifth one, Jonathan strengthened David to the point of risking his life for David and even proving it in front of his fathers and his father army. 
So what is a lesson? If we're loyal to people, let's support them. If we don't have the privilege and others have certain privilege that we think or we know we're supposed to get, but Jehovah's decision is the person get it, support the arrangement. Don't fight the person and don't go against Jehovah's direction. So then, what two things we learn from this talk? One, respect people in authority. Two, show loyalty to your friends, especially when it comes to privilege or service in serving Jehovah. So then, whenever we are in a congregation, let's ask ourselves, how can I show respect to the elders in the congregation? How can I show that I'm loyal to my brothers and sisters? Let's follow David's example and remain loyal in serving Jehovah. Thank you very much, Brother Bangula, for nicely uh, handling your part and helping us to see what the bow is. So now move on further uh, into the next 10-minute part. Google thing then inside the Bible. What can we learn from that? What can we, how can we gather them? Now please give our attention to Brother Benaya Yukwe, who will take us through this section. So we certainly enjoy reading 2 Samuel chapters 1 to 3. So let's first start with a reading of 2 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 26. And we'll need a reader for that. Let's give it to Sister Mo Beatrice, please. You were very dear to me. More wonderful was your love to me than the love of women. Thank you very much. So why David called Jonathan my brother? Sister Raphael, please. So even though they were not from the same ma and same pa, but because they had deep love for one another and they had the same goal and purpose in mind, then he was right to call him my brother. Yes, very true. Very true. What else? Sister Bian? And that's what can happen in our everyday life. Somebody you have close relationship with or friendship with, you friend away all the time. You can be as close as more than brother said. So you, you can call that person your brother or sister. Yes, very true. Sister Menza? And even in the Bible, in Psalms 133, 1, it says it's pleasant for brothers to dwell together in unity. It, it just means that we're doing the same thing. We like each other and we're doing the same thing so we can call each other brothers. Very good. So we can see all of those nice points coming together. See why David could call Jonathan my brother. Now, we know we ourselves found other things in, in our Bible reading. So what did you learn from the Bible reading this week about Jehovah, the preaching work, or any other thing? What did you learn? Brother Tolly, please. We see after the death of uh, Jonathan, the way uh, David cried, and even composed as dirge for Jonathan, shows the uh, closeness they had. So it can happen to us too when someone too close to us, we can really feel the pain. And sometimes, like in the provinces, you see some people singing whenever they think about that person. So it shows the love we can show. So the unity that we have can also uh, help us to continue to deepen that love. Yes, certainly. And uh, Sister Bian? When David saw we living, he and David, he never had any good relationship with David, but David respected him. So when he died in, in first, Second Timothy 1, verse 23, there, Saul said that, so, David said that Saul would be loved, and he meant it. That's why he was so grieved. So he respected Better Jehovah of uh, uh, arrangement. So my set two, we live in better. We see all of our oars here. They are imperfection and everything. But still knowing who put them to the place they are, 
I want to be respectful and honor them. Very nice comment. Thank you. Uh, Brother Thompson, please. I learned a lot from David uh, in chapter 2, verse 1. It says, After David inquired of Jehovah, saying, Should I go up into one of the cities of Judah? Jehovah said to him, Go up. But then he asked again, Where should I go? So he wanted to get clear direction, clear information, so that when he acted, he acted in accordance with what he requested. I also want to do that. If I have situation, if I don't understand, I need to ask questions so I understand it and do just as I'm being told. Yes, yeah, very good. Uh, Sister Wisa, please. Second Samuel 2, 5 to 7, we saw after saw in Jonathan that the man they bring the body and they came to tell David, David praised the man that bring the body. So does this mean that if somebody's body is burned and is buried, Jehovah is against that. The watchdog research says that Jehovah is not concerned about that, but he remembers each of his seven, whether the person is burned in the buried it does, or the person is buried like that in the body decay during the restoration, Jehovah is going to remember each of his seven, no matter how they were buried. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Sister Menza, please. In chapter 2, verse 8, Saul dies. But Abner, his army chief, decides to put his son there. It made me wonder why. Because if Jonathan knew that David was appointed, then why would he do that? And it, it, I found out that Abner was um, Saul's uncle. So probably he wanted to just carry the family line. He, he felt close ties to him. So I just learned that I shouldn't allow family ties to make me go against the will of Jehovah because Abner was going against the will of Jehovah. Very nice point. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Brother Benjo, please. In, first, in Second Samuel chapter 1, verses 23, David made mention of Saul and Jonathan, beloved and cherished. When you look at all the things that Saul did, especially chasing David, running after his life, from a human standpoint, you will notice that it was something very, very difficult. But because David had deep love for Saul and his son Jonathan, love moved him not to rejoice over unrighteousness. So it's something that we all can learn from when it come to. Maybe if somebody do something to us in the congregation, we should not just, you know, be thinking, especially when bad things happen to them, to be happy. But let love move us to feel for them. Very good point. Thank you. And Sister Raphael, please. And in Second Samuel chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, this young Amalekite who lied, that he was the one who finally put Saul to death because Saul was suffering. One, maybe he did it because he wanted to make a name for himself. And two, the lesson I learned that mercy killing, Jehovah does not approve of it, even if the person is suffering. As Christians, our Bible trained conscience should not put us in that position to kill the person. Yes, very true, thank you. Thank you. A lot of interesting things in this uh, reading of Second Samuel 1 to 3. We even see David's view of killing someone in revenge, taking vengeance, and how he reacted when Joab also killed Abner. And we can see how Jehovah also viewed David because of the way David himself reacted to taking vengeance against another. So what a nice way we can continue to enjoy our Bible reading. Look for Google things inside and see how it can benefit us in our relationship with Jehovah and also help people in the field ministry. Thank you very much, Brother Benaya Yukwe, for nicely uh, going through that section and uh, to the audience for your beautiful comment in support of uh, that material. We then want to turn our Bible to 2 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 16. We have Brother Samuel Manja reading for us. Second Samuel. The war between the house of Saul and the house of David dragged on, and David kept getting stronger, and the house of Saul grew steadily weaker. 
Meanwhile, sons were born to David in Hebron. His firstborn was Abnon by Ahinoam of Jezreel. His second was Caleb by Abigail, the widow of Nebo, the Kemalite, and the third was Absalom, the sons of Milcah, the daughter of Tamar, the king of Gesher. The fourth was Adonijah, the sons of Haggath, and the fifth was Shephatiah, the sons of Abaita. The sixth was Ethrian by David's wife Egla. These were born to David in Hebron. While the war between the house of Saul and the house of David continued, Abner kept strengthening his position in the house of Saul. Now, Saul had had a concubine whose name was Rispa, the daughter of Ea. Ishibosheth later said to Abner, Why did you have relation with the concubine of my father? Abner grew very angry over the words of Ishibosheth and said, Am I a dog's hair from Judah? Until this very day, I have shown loyal love towards the house of your father, Saul, and to his brothers and his friends. And I have not betrayed you into the hands of David. Yet today you call me to account for an error concerning a woman. May God do so to Abner and add to it if I do not do for David just as Jehovah so to him. To transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul to establish the throne of David over Israel and over Judah from Dan to Beersheba. He was not able to say one more word in, in reply to Abner, for he was afraid of him. Abner immediately sent messengers to David, saying, To whom does the land belong? He added, Make a covenant with me, and I will do whatever I can to turn all Israel to your side. To this, he replied, Good, I will make a covenant with you. The only thing I ask of you is that you do not try to see my face unless first you bring Micah, Saul's daughter, when you come to see me. Then David sent messengers to Ishibosheth, Saul's son, saying, Give me my wife. Give me my wife, Micah, to whom I begin to engage for a hundred four skins of the Philistines. So Ishibosheth sent to take her from her husband, Parthia, the son of Leish. But her husband kept walking with her, weeping as he followed her as far as Behurim. Then Abner said to him, Go, return. At that, he returned. Brother Manja, we say thank you very much for nicely uh, reading and fulfilling your responsibility. Uh, there are a few things we looked at as we were reading, and especially when uh, each book show brought about Abner following his father's wife, and the tune of voice you read there kind of changed it to make sure that the point came across. So that was very good. Thank you so much. Now, what I said we were specifically looking at as we were reading, uh, turn to study number five, please. It says, how to read good. Then it says here, yeah, how to do it. It says, prepare good, good. Think about the reason why they wrote the thing you come coming to read. And then uh, a portion that I like, in there it says, a practice to read the word them in group. Don't count it one by one. And we didn't see you do that. You were reading and you were taking accounts of your different punctuation and things like that. And it's good to do that. In fact, the book, the, the box there suggests something that we can do. It says, if you have a reading, ask a friend to listen to you so that as you read, they count the word you miss. Then in that case, it can help you. But apart from that, you did very well with your reading. All your points are in place. So we say thank you very much. We appreciate that. Now let's move on to how to do the preaching work good, good. And uh, we have our different uh, people, our different sisters, well prepared. So we called on Sister Moore, Sister Moore, and uh, Sister We say, let them take us through the first part there, first return visit, start with the example of preaching and see what happened. 
Hello. Yes, hello. How are you doing, ma? Now, bow. My name is Beatrice, yeah? Okay, my name is Priscilla. Okay. Priscilla, sorry. I heard a row broke in last night and stole from you, eh? Hmm. Yeah, ma. I sit inside waiting for the boss name to bring this thing so they can fix the place. Yeah, sorry, ya. Yeah? But Priscilla, oh, you think the suffering I will go through? You think a punishment from God? <laughs> if not punishment from God, then I what I beg you, ma, waiting for the boss to bring this thing to fill my plate. Don't bring God in to me the money. Mm. I understand, yeah, Priscilla. But Priscilla, let me ask you, do you have children? Yes, I have two children. Uh -huh. So if your child's tea, Priscilla, you think you will punish them by tying the person's hand, putting fire in their hand, to burn their hand? No, I will put fire in my child's hand for I can easily find different punishment for the person. Uh -huh. But Priscilla, the problem that I will have on the earth today that will go in you, you think you only you think you can compare it to only burning or charging or a wooden? No, it can be compared to a because somebody here can burn but they can still live. But we see people dying to this, some of them you don't understand why they die. Uh huh. So the thing that we're going through is more than burning or charging. And so, so that's why I just want to show you one scripture, Priscilla. I will not stay long. Okay, go ahead. I understand. Okay, thank you. It's in James chapter 1. Verse 13, it says, When on a trial, let no one say, I am being tried by God. For with evil things, God cannot, try, God cannot be tried, nor does him himself try anyone. So from the verse that I just read, it says when we are on a trial or we are suffering, what do we shouldn't say? And it says we shouldn't say that God, because God can do evil things to us. Uh-huh, God can do evil things to us. Priscilla, all of all are on the earth. We the human being, like who created us? Like God created us. Uh -huh. So we do, we are just looking at children to God. So from the scripture that we read, you think God can punish us because we sin against him. Then he may ought to be suffering and dying? No, that's not God. I understand it now. Mm -hmm. So saying that now God, Priscilla, I want to leave you with another question. Okay. Yes, when I go out, then it will be who myself will be thinking on our own. Uh -huh. So that's why I will leave you with this question. Why we suffer? So next time when we come to the market era, when no customer come in, I want for the Bible to help us answer that question again. All right, no problem. I'll be waiting tomorrow. Okay, thank you. What a beautiful way to handle that. Because uh, if you didn't, look ahead, you, you are going to give up because she, she didn't want to talk about God business this morning with all that was going on. But then you, you went in. How did you do that? The, the point you were assigned on say how to use question and we saw you bringing small, small question in and find out that he led her into following you. That was very fine. So let's just take a look at it. It's a help uh, if you have your uh, book there, the study book there. It says how to do it. Help the people to get interested and continue listening. And one of the ways in which you can do that is to ask repeat a question that they anticipate, look forward to getting the answer. And that's why you kept doing it. Even to set a basis for your return, you even ask another question and that she's prepared to, to receive the answer once you return. So we say thank you very much. Both of you did very well with your assignment this morning. So let's move on now to return visit. Start with the examples of preaching. Tell the people. Okay, they are here. Very good. So let's move on. Hello, Rama. Hello, are you taking far or what happening? Alice, I went to red light today. The thing my eyeballs saw. It too sorrowful, man. I met a woman. She and her three children. They have not eaten for days. Mm. The husband died in the war. They ran away from the war. If I had something, I would have given them, but I didn't have nothing. I'm feeling so, so bad. Hey, yeah. Rama, you know the whole suffering business is so sad to see. He must be that God me. 
just suffering all over the world. And you know that the same question, you remember the last time I left you with a question like that? Why we suffer? What do you think, Rama? Why we suffer so much? Alice, if they're not God, then they're who now? I don't know. You know, Rama, I agree with you somehow. Because the only God we know. And because of that, anything that happened to us, we can say that he. But let me show you something from inside the Bible again. Turn your Bible to 1 John 5, 19. And let me read it, please. It says, We know that we originate with God, but the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. Good. So from this Bible verse, it said the whole world, who controlling it? The wicked one. The wicked one. It is the wicked one controlling the world. Raman, you think it will be God or his son Jesus? No, man, they can't do bad things. No. So what do you think? Who that wicked one? That's Satan? Yes. And are he the one who would never want to see anything good come from all of us? Grandma, if you want to know more about the suffering, what bad thing happened to us, and so on, we are our witnesses. Like you know, we love to study the Bible with people who are interested in God and the Bible. So I would like to study with the Bible with you too. And you know, we have this card that can take help you to go to our website. I will put it right here so you can read it. Thank you. Yes. So I would like for you to use that card to go on our website. We have a new study book there. It's called Enjoy Life Now and Forever. I want you to read uh, Lesson 26. That lesson discuss why bad things can happen to us and why we can suffer. And also answer a very interesting question too. How God can feel when you see you, me, and all the, that woman you talk about and her children when they suffering like that, how you can feel about it? So please try to download it and read it. The next week, we will be able to discuss it again. Thank you very much. I'll do that, yeah? Okay. okay. Thank you. I, I thought you were going to leave the card for me. Sister Bien and Sister Rafa, that was very nice. Very nice. Uh, it was touching. It, it, it brought out the point, and we really appreciate it. And we noticed that you follow the directions here. As I said, then give the person one of the cards and wish you did. That was very nice. Thank you. Now, let's just uh, turn quickly to study number 20, uh, the section you were assigned, the right way to end your talk. And uh, it says, when you end your talk, try to encourage the people to do what you finish learning, what they finish learning. And we, we saw you do that. In fact, the way you enter it, just look at the, the third bullet point there. It says, the end of your talk must be simple and short. <laughs> don't, don't run through it. Don't bring in new one. And you led her to, here's a publication. Here's a direction. Here is what you can find information to. And she was willing. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. Very nice. So we look forward to the friends in the congregation here applying that in the ministry when, once we have the opportunity to do so. Now, now we'll go to our Bible study. We we'll call on Sister Mensa and Sister Sandy that will handle that portion for us. So take your, your book, Lesson 4.5, and when some people say, so, Sissy, in four, we saw how God wants you to know his name and use the name. And we talk about how there are plenty of times he got it in the Bible, right? 
Yes, I have really enjoyed that subject. Mm -hmm. So now we're coming to point five, where it says Jehovah wants you to be his friend. So who really we come and talk about? Namio. Yes. Yes. What knowing that name can do for you. So you want to read the paragraph under there, under point five? A woman from Cambodia named Sultan said that learning God's name helped her to enjoy the best feeling on earth, play the video, and then discuss the questions that follows. Yes. So we come and watch this video that's going to talk about this woman. Her name is Sultan. What learning God's name did for her? See whether you can see what it did for her and how it affected her. Yeah? Okay. Let's watch the video, please. Very good. So you see this woman, it wasn't easy for her. You see how she suffered, right? As can see. Mm -hmm. Now, learning in that video now, how learning God's name helped her? Hmm. Learning God's name really made her happy, and she said it drew her closer to God. Yes. Now, you notice how it started affecting the way she would pray? She was praying even using God's name. And she really, really felt so happy. Yes, it made her happy. So that's how just learning God's name, using it. Now she was using the name. That's how it affected Sutton. What about you? Read the, the paragraph under the question, please. Before becoming someone's friend, you usually... You usually learn his name or her name. Read James 4, 8a, and then discuss these questions. Very good. Let's read the scripture and talk a little bit about it, yeah? Okay. Draw close to God, and he will draw close to you. Very good. So from the scripture you read there, what Jehovah says you should do? Jehovah is inviting me to draw close to him. And he said, he will draw close to me. Now, you see in the paragraph you read, it says before you can be somebody's friend, the first thing you can get to know about that person that they're what? Ali Nemo. You agree? I agree because me and you became friends because I know your name, you know my name, and I always call your name and you do the same. And that makes our friendship take. Yes. So now when you know God's name and you call him by that name, how you think it will help you to draw closer to him, like the scripture says? I think it will really get us closer. And it also makes me happy knowing that now I know God's name, I pray to him and he can heal me. That's it all. Imagine somebody just calling you, um, um, you, you, how, how you will be? I will not even look, I will even answer that person. That's it. So now you and Jehovah got the chance to get close now because you know his name. How it makes you feel? Now I am feeling happy. I know that I have a good friend. When I get probably I can even discuss with him using his name. I'm so happy I know this information today. Very good. Very good. But you know something? Some people can say that God that won. So it, it doesn't matter. What name you call him? How do you answer such a person? That person, then he be serious. <laughs> and because <laughs> I get my friend, then you see my name, the friendship will not improve. It will not progress. So knowing God's name today really make me happy. I want to use that name. And I will continue to teach that name to other people. And knowing God's name, I use it so I can save my life and can save the life of other people. Very it's good. Very important. Very good. You remember the point under point four in that scripture. So maybe you can include the scripture. Eh? That scripture we read in point four, Romans 10, 13. Yes. Knowing God's name leads to salvation. Very good. I see that you got the point. So now I know what you will always do with God's name. I will use it all the time. I will use it to pray. I will teach it to other people. I will never forget to use God's name because he is my best friend. Very good. That's the road on becoming God's friend. So you're on the road already. So let's do the summary, yeah? 
Thank you. Very beautiful, very nice. Thank you, you both. The material came up nicely. And especially I like the way when you first started, who are we coming to talk about today? She said me. So that already means that she was inside, like I said, try hard to touch the people's heart. So you were talking to her, so you can see from that very beginning, it started sinking into her heart. And uh, that's what the study article you, you were assigned on do. It said, try to touch the heart of the people. And then uh, it said, help the people to focus on Jehovah. Now she got to know God's name, and she herself said she was even going to start talking about it. And then even rem remembering the scripture in it. So no doubt we want to tell all of our students very, very uh, thank, thank so much. We enjoy all your part that you, you play today. That's very nice. So you will notice uh, we will sing, uh, living like Christians, we will sing, but we will escape the two part because it will be replaced by the governing body update number three. So it's good that you study it to add to the knowledge you already have. So last time, please. And if it's convenient, then we sing song 107, The Divine Pattern of Love. And it's based on 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. Thank you very much for that sinking. You may be seated. So now we will give our attention to the uh, technical crew that will play that uh, update number three of the governing body, please. Brothers and sisters, you're welcome to this update. We know that others are still thinking about the memorial of Christ's death and the great love that Jehovah and Jesus now show to us. And it was so good that plenty of us were able to meet together for this most important program of the year. And you are happy when you hear that we'll be going back for meeting all over the world on April 1st? The governing body really feel that Jehovah the one that helped them make that decision. And so, we're happy to share it with you. Less than two hours after our meeting, they put it on our website. We know that you get the same feeling like our brothers and sisters there in the video that coming on. back to the kingdom hall and seeing the brothers then and hawking them really made me happy and show that Jehovah God really know what we need. The two are too happy to be here and hearing everybody commenting. I was feeling a little bit worried this morning, but now now I am really happy that all the all here. It's good to see Jehovah people coming back together to worship Him in the Kingdom Hall again.
after a long time, just seeing one another face to face, even with our masks on, really made us happy. Singing together, praying together, meeting new ones face to face, all they wanted were too encouraging. One seven year old guest said, I've never been more patient than this before, waiting for two years before going back to the kingdom hall. We were able to go back to the kingdom hall because the place they signal now rich air, plenty of people taking the vaccine. And they get plenty of new medicine for it now. Besides that, plenty of government around the world now move their restrictions. In some part of the world, people don't start doing their normal thing they used to do small, small. What it mean? It means that all are all learning to live with COVID-19, but at the same time, protecting ourselves. In the future, we hope that we'll be able to carry on other theocratic activities. But for now, in the remaining part of this update, we'll be talking about what's happening in Ukraine and Russia. How our brother and sister are in those countries coming on? What do we can do if we're worrying about what's happening to them? I show that all of us being happy for the information they've been getting on JW.org. Despite the war and the sickness, our brother and sister there in Eastern Europe been working hard in the field service. Their strong faith can really encourage us. The branch office in Ukraine doing their best to help plenty of our brothers there that left their homes. The branch office report that, starting from Monday, April 18, over 42,000 of our brothers and sisters in Ukraine now run away from their homes. Close to 19,000 of them now run away and go to other countries. We sad to let you know that, that the two of our brothers and sisters now die. How will my look at all the things that are happening? Remember what Jesus said about the things that will be happening when he be king in heaven. In Matthew 24, 6, he said, You are going to hear of wars and report of wars. Some people who can study the Bible say, It means war they can fight near you and war that they can fight far off from you. Another translation say, You are going to hear the noise of battle close by and the news of battles far away. And that one happening today. Some of us hearing the sound of war near us and other people hearing it far off from them. In this news report, you can see some terrible pictures of people who they hate or people who not die. Sometimes, it can be looking just like you right there seeing what's happening. Also, we can see and hear how the reports affecting our brother then. How it can make you feel. Worry? Surprise? Vex? Or feeling some kind of way? It can hurt us to see our brothers and sisters suffering. And sometimes, we can even ask, why Jehovah allowing they want to happen? It's normal to feel like that. But we need to be careful. Why? Because of what Jesus said in the remaining part of Matthew 24, 6. It said, See that you are not alarmed, for these things must take place, but the end is not yet. Do not be alarmed. Or, another translation say, Be careful not to be too scary until you can think the right way. Then another one say, be sure to not get vexed. What thing can help us to not be worrying too much? Yeah, four things that can help us. Number one, remember why Jehovah allowed war to affect our brother then. Think about Job example. In Job 1 verse 10, Satan tells Jehovah say, have you not put up a protective hedge around him and his house and everything he has? Satan said that Job and all other humans serving Jehovah for only selfish reasons. So Jehovah allowed Job to lose everything 
But still, Job remained faithful and proved Satan a liar. And that the same thing happening today. Some of our dear brothers and sisters now love everything. Their homes, their property, their jobs, and even their loved ones. Why running away because of the war? With all the war and the hard time our brothers and sisters are going through, they stay remaining faithful to Jehovah and showing that Satan that liar. Number two, we must expect it not to happen. And you can remember what happened right after Jesus died. They killed Stephen and James. Then Jesus' disciples ran away from Jerusalem and lost all their properties. The same thing then been happening since 1914. Since some of us were born, we not even see war fighting before, and we not even experience it yet. But plenty of our brothers and sisters live into places where they're fighting war and going through so many problems. And in some places, some of them are experiencing it now now. But it can really encourage us to see plenty of our brothers and sisters remaining faithful to Jehovah and continue to endure it. The fact that we see all the things that happening show that Jehovah will soon step in to put end to all the wicked things we see happening in the world today. One brother said that the disciples then were not just asking because they wanted to know how things would really get bad, but they wanted to know when Jehovah would step in and when he would finish all the problems. Number three, Remember that other all get a chance now to show our trust in Jehovah. They want just maybe think about one brother and his wife in Japan who lost everything when the heavy rain came. They say, We thought that we trusted in Jehovah before. But now, now we really know what it means. And one missionary say, when we feel that we're not able to solve our problem, that a time we can see Jehovah helping us. So, remember what Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15 say. Your strength will be in keeping calm and showing trust. Yes, remain calm and show our trust in Jehovah. We show that Jehovah know all the things our brother need and he will take care of them. That the reason why our year text for 2022, that Psalm 34 verse 10 say, those seeking Jehovah will lack nothing good. Maybe we can give the example of somebody who taking care of a sick person. When somebody you love sick and you taking care of them, you can feel it more than the person that's sick. Why? Because when the person that's sick, rely on Jehovah, only he the one can enjoy the peace that Jehovah can give. But for you who taking care of the sick person, it can be hard. You taking care of the person that you can be worried about all the things there that could happen. So you see the point. We not become like somebody who taking care of our brothers and sisters in Eastern Europe where they fighting war. We really worry about them. But I want different from being there yourself. Jehovah can give his Holy Spirit to those who need it. So we show that Jehovah giving our brothers and sisters in Eastern Europe what they need right now. When we remember the one year, it will help us to not be worrying too much. What a fourth thing that can help us. We may not put our hand in politics. We know that plenty of news that people can be writing, they can write it because they want to encourage people to be supporting one side. How we can act when we hear this news then? We need to protect our heart and mind, knowing that God's kingdom will soon replace all human government. We know that no human being able to bring real peace and security on this earth that only God's kingdom can do it. So, we need to put all our trust in God's kingdom. 
we now talk about four things that can help us to not be worrying about what's happening in Eastern Europe. We remember why Jehovah allowed war to happen. We must expect the thing to happen. We show that we trust in Jehovah and we must not put our hand in politics. What did not help some of our brothers and sisters to not be worrying too much when they hear about wars? Let's watch the video that coming on. When I reading the news and hearing all the Baba news about the way the people bombing the place, it can really help me. I can feel so bad because I not get the power to help them. When we hear all the news about the war, it can make you so worried about everything that happening. And it can even affect your thinking. And it can make it easier for you to support one side. My family living in Ukraine. So when the war started, I will worry about them. So I can call them every day to see how they coming on. What they told me really affected me and it made me to start worrying about their situation. When I hear the story about a brother then who run away with their children from their home just to save their life, it really touched my heart. That reading the Bible really helping me. I can read it in the morning, during the day, and before I go to bed. It can help me not to think plenty on the plenty of bad things that are happening. And it can make me to feel that God talking with me to make my heart to lay down so I can be worrying. I can try to think on how Jehovah has been helping his servant and way back. I can also think on what Psalm 46 verse 9 says. It says Jehovah is bringing an end to war throughout the earth. It strengthens my faith that God will soon destroy all the things in the fighting war with and bring peace on the earth. I can try to remember the brother then name and pray for them. And I one way I can help the brother then. I can try hard to avoid listening to too much news. Why really helping me? Like reading the news on our JW.org website about our brother and sister name from different different countries. Not only Ukraine and Russia. The cool example is setting and really helping me to be focused. Plenty of things now convince me that only God's kingdom can solve our problem. So we can see the big difference between the people who serve Jehovah and the people who are not serving Him. Jehovah people can pick and choose. We love each other. And we can see that one in every country. We can allow our different, different backgrounds in to defy us. And we're too happy to see that one happening among Jehovah people. I'm sure that God will use His kingdom to finish all the problems that we are going through because of human rulership. I'm sure that only God's kingdom can solve all our problems then forever. And I really believe it because anything Jehovah says can always happen. Very soon, God cannot come and be ruling over the whole earth and will really enjoy peace. And you see what help our brothers to not be worrying too much when they hear the news, eh? They look to God's kingdom to solve all the problems then. They avoid listening to or watching too much news. Thinking on how Jehovah helped a servant then way back. Praying all the time. And thinking about the time where people will not fight war no more and will enjoy peace forever. All the one then can help us too. Jehovah knows that we not only need material things, but we also need comfort and support. For example, think about the recent Awake magazine with the title, A War in Turmoil, How You Can Cope. It explains how you can protect your health, means of living, relationship, and your hope. And every topic gets some Google information and are full at the right time. Even though things hard on our brothers in Eastern Europe, but encouraging to hear that, they still helping their brothers and sisters in countries near them. Plenty of them not even gave their place to their displaced brothers and sisters to stay. And many of them helping with the relief work, whether that to help them to the relief center or when they're crossing the border 
or providing food and other things for them. Because they're living close to Ukraine, our brothers in Hungary, Moldova, Poland, Romania, Slovakia, and other countries really been busy in helping with relief work in their branch territories. And plenty of them working hard to help their brothers who run away from their home to find work and get back on their feet. We will continue to pray for all you dear brothers and sisters. From what we now learn, we now need to be worried when we experience war or hear of wars. Why? Because we trust that Jehovah will continue to care for his servants then. From the World Headquarters of Jehovah's Witnesses, that JW Broadcasting here. Very good. So, many things to learn from this update number three, isn't it? So, just as we've been told, let us practice, let us follow those directions being given, and let us continue to do the best we can in our service to Jehovah. We will now move on to the Congregation Bible Study. For our Congregation Bible Study, we have Brother Emmanuel Tholi, and then Brother Jeff Siafunda, who will both hand it apart for us, please. Enjoy life forever. Jehovah has promised us so that all of us can enjoy this life forever. But there are things that we need to know about Jehovah and about life that can help us to see how we can enjoy this life. So today we are going to study lesson four, who the true God, who the true God, who is the true God. To start, may we please invite Brother Siafunda to read the introduction and paragraph one. From the time human beings started living on the earth, they now worship plenty different different gods. But the Bible talks about one God who is greater than all other gods. Who that God? And what it make him greater than all other God them? In this lesson, we will learn how that God wants you to know about him. In the Bible, God showed his name to us. He said, I am Jehovah. That is my name. The name Jehovah coming from Hebrew. Some book people say it means he causes to become. Jehovah wants us to know his name. Why we say so? Because his name in the Bible more than 7,000 times. The name Jehovah only for the true God in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. Thank you for the reading. Now, according to 2 Chronicles 2 verse 5, what do we know about Jehovah? 2 Chronicles 2 verse 5. Sister Bien, please. That voice referred to Jehovah as the great God. Yes, so Jehovah is greater. Yes, brother. Says he's greater than all other gods. Very good. Excellent. Thank you. So we see that since Jehovah is greater than all other gods, what does that, or what should that move us to do? It's greater than all other gods. What should that move us to do? Yes, brother Menjor. That should even move us to worship him. Yes, you see? So now we have to be determined to be closer to that one ever more. Very important. Eh? Now, look at question one about Jehovah's name. Waiting showed that he wants us to use that name. So we know Jehovah's name. But uh, Sister Wissa, please. See, the amount of times that name is written in the Bible, it says more than 7,000 times. That shows that Jehovah wants us to know that name and to use it. Very good. Now, there is a read scripture, 
Isaiah 42, verse 5 and 8. Brother Thompson, please. This is what the true God, this is what the true God Jehovah says, the creator of the heavens and the grand one who stretched them out, the one who spread out the earth and its produce, the one who gives breath to the people on it and spirit of those who walk on it. Then eight. I am Jehovah. That is my name. I gave my glory to no one else, nor my praise to graving images. Thank you, plenty. So according to verse 5, what do we learn about Jehovah? According to verse 5, 42 verse 5. Sister Raful, please. He identifies himself as the one who made all things, the creator. Yes. So creating and then Brother Thompson, please. Especially what I like for verse 8, he introduces himself, I am Jehovah. And usually if you're talking to someone the first time and you want them to know your name, you say, my name is Nathaniel Thompson, and what is your name? So obviously you want for them to use your name, and that's what Jehovah is telling us. My name is Jehovah, use it. Very good, excellent. Thank you very much. Sister Sandy, please. And he continued to repeat it different, different places, so much as uh, more than 7,000 times showing that Jehovah, the grand creator, really want us to know his name and use it. Very good. So even though we are serving Jehovah, what does that name mean to us? Let's look at paragraph two. The Bible say that among all the God them that people can worship, Jehovah, that the only true God. Why? Because of different, different reasons. Jehovah get power over everything, and that only Him, the Most High, over all the earth. The Bible call Him the Almighty, because He get power to do anything He want to do. He created all things in the heaven and on the earth. Only Jehovah not get beginning, and he will live forever. Thank you for the reading, Brother wow. Siafunda. Let's please read Psalm 83:18, please. Okay, Sister Mo. May people know that you, whose name is Jehovah, you alone are the most high over all the earth. Excellent. So, what did the Bible tell us about Jehovah? Sister Bien, please. The Bible tells us over there that Jehovah is the most high over all the earth. And another scripture tells us that he is the almighty king of eternity. All that they describe our God. Yes, excellent. So how can we tie Revelation 4, 8, 11 to Psalm 83, 18? How can we tie the two together? How can we? Okay, Sister Mensa, please. In, in verse 8 of Revelation 4, he calls himself the Almighty, which resembles what it says in in. Psalm 83, 18, that he's the most high. It tells us not only is he high in glory and, and prestige, but he also has all the power. Nobody has more strength than Jehovah. Then in verse 11, it tells us it shows his power. He, he created all things. So it helps us to see those scriptures are tied. Excellent. So just a, another addition to that the, in Revelation 4, 8, about talking about the angels, how does that, or how should that affect us? You know, Jehovah is almighty, is the creator. What does... Revelation 4, 8. There are three words there. Brother Yuki, please. 
They say, holy, holy, holy is Jehovah the Almighty. So we can see how uh, the angels emphasize uh, Jehovah's holiness, the right for him and to be worshipped. Yeah, so, very good, thank you. So how should that affect us, sister? Okay, sister Sandy, please. It should really, really affect us to the extent that when we are even talking to Jehovah, we have to think uh, about what we will say and how we say it. Uh, and the position seller we take, it should really, really show us that we are talking to the highest human being. The angels are said, holy, holy is Jehovah God. It's not any rank of angels. It's the highest ranks of angels among the angels, showing that we can't just talk to Jehovah anyhow. Very good. Thank you so much. Sister Bien, please. And it should also help us whatever problem we are going through. Our God, Jehovah, he gave all the power. Nobody get power. No problem is bigger than him, our creator. So we should always go to him to help us for help. Very good. So when we are teaching our Bible students, how can we impress the dignity of Jehovah to them? It's the Almighty, it's the Creator, the, even the angels are saying, holy, holy, holy. So how can we impress that dignity in our Bible students? Sister Mensa, please. Usually, I encourage them to think about what it means, and then go with the feeling that it gives you, because when you really think about these different experiences, the way Jehovah is described, when you think about it, it just moves you to want to really respect him and really worship him. Yes, see, so that's very, very important. Let's learn more about Jehovah's name, and we are going to see this section, learning about Jehovah's name, and watch a video so that we can get to know Jehovah properly. And what, he has a name, but there are other titles that we can also use. Let's please watch the video. One man can get plenty of title, like Hosmo, Father, Bela, and his real name, like John. In the same way, God get plenty of good, good title, like Almighty, Creator and Lord. He get one name that all of God then not get. That name, that Jehovah. So after watching that video, uh, let's think, how does Jehovah, or how can we use, or how can we differentiate when we are teaching our Bible students the name and titles. Sister Refu, please. So we can help them to see that title is showing the position or the role that the person playing or the group of people, how you can categorize them like men, husband, father. But now the name identify the person as an individual. So it makes the person stand out, just like how you will come here. If you say you're looking for one man, there are plenty of men in here. But when you say the name of the person now, then you single out that person, you identify the person. Very good, excellent. It's very important, right? Let's look at Psalm 136, verse one to three, and invite a reader, please. And Brother Siafuna, please. Give thanks to Jehovah, for he is good. His loyal love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his loyal love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his loyal love endures forever. Now here, I talk about gods and lords. What do we understand? Um, lords and gods, Sister Mensa, please. That means that there are many gods and many lords, and the Bible is telling us this. Very good. Thank you so much. Sister Bien, please. 
And when you look at all the gods and all the laws that we have in the world today, or that people worship, we have only one true God, which is Jehovah our God. Yes, thank you plenty. Brother, you okay? And that's why he showed us his name, because he knows that there are many other lords, many other gods, so he showed us his name so that we can identify him as the only true God. Yes, beautiful. Thank you for that. Now, Jehovah wants us to use his name, as we can use names. But there is something very specific in using that name. Let's find out in the next part. Jehovah wants you to know his name and call him. Let's watch the video. Call get name. Plenty of God and name in the Bible. The country that I were around Israel worship other gods called Astoreth, Bill, and Molech. The way back Christians then were living among people who worship other gods called Artemis, Hermes, and Zeus, and their name inside the Bible. The Bible shows that they get many gods. But we can find one God named plenty of time in the way by writing of the Bible more than all the other gods they name. If you read the Bible then that people get today, you will still find the other God they name inside it. But in plenty of Bible, they move the name of the God that was inside the Bible plenty of times. They wrote God's name about 7,000 times inside the first copy of the Bible. Which God need they now move from in the Bible? They wrote the first part of the Bible that people can call the Old Testament in Hebrew and Aramaic. In Hebrew, four letters stand for God's name. You can read Hebrew from right to left. In English, the four consonant letters that Y-H-W-H. -H. Nobody know how the vowel letter they use in God's name can sound. But you can find the four letters that stand for God's name all over in the old copies of the Bible. And they now write it in plenty other places. In English, some people can call God Jehovah. Other people can call him Yahweh. In some Bibles, you can find this name then in Psalm 83 verse 18 and in some other places. In other Bibles, like the New World's translation of the Holy Scripture, they now put God's name back to the places where it was when they first wrote the Bible. St. God told the people to write his name inside the Bible about 7,000 times. He really wants us to know it and to use it. In the law God gave to Israel, he told Moses to write, Listing, O Israel, Jehovah our God is one Jehovah. Jesus talked about that part of the law, so it clear that he knew God's own name and he used it. In one of his last prayers before he died, Jesus said to Jehovah God, I have made your name known. Very good. So after watching that video, let's please read Romans 10 verse 13. Yes, invite the reader. Brother Menjo, please. It says, For everyone who calls on the name of Jehovah will be saved. Excellent. So why calling on God's name so important? Why is calling on God's name important? Sister Mo. So it's important because they say everyone who calls on that name will be saved. So even though they have plenty of God and they get a name for them, but only that God's name, when you use it, you can be saved. Yes. So Jehovah's name is associated to salvation. Yeah, okay, brother, sister, yeah, please. Yes. So that's why I wanted to say Jehovah's name 
has to do with our lives. So for us to really call on that name, we got to know the person, the God that gave that name so that when we need our life, we can call him to give it to us. Very good. So how do we feel? Teaching our Bible student about Jehovah's name, how do we feel? Imagine it means salvation. We are teaching our students, how do we feel? Telling them about Jehovah's name, brother. Do you quick, please. It's exciting. It's, it's something that is uh, a privilege for us to do because imagine the most important person in the universe, the Almighty, has given us this opportunity to know him and help others to know him. It's, it's very, very exciting and it's a great privilege for us. Yeah. So what about us? If someone is using our name in conversations, or, how do we feel? Sister, we say please. It makes us so feel unique, and we also feel respected when a person uses our name. We know that the person is referring to us. That is why it identifies us uniquely. Yeah, we see. So how much more Jehovah when we use his name? Okay, Sister Mo. The answer is immediate. Yeah, so Jehovah too, he feels the same way. When we use his name, Jehovah can feel good. He can feel good because he knows that we recognize him as the creator and as the true God. Because only he gets our name. See? Thank you. Plenty. So now let's see how this name also is associated with friendship. In our next video, paragraph 5, Let's see how we can also build friendship with Jehovah. Plenty of people say the first time they go to Jehovah when they meet him, they can hear God name Jehovah. In a true life story, Sister Sotin Yuan tell her how Lenny God name help her after she survived from Cambodia. Wow, in Cambodia, to the place where they used to kill people, I pray to God. But I know he knew. When I was a small girl, they tell me from my family to work on a rare farm. I used to work every day from 5 o'clock in the morning until 9 o'clock in the night. When you see the other children that they kill, you feel too bad and you start crying in your heart. And you'll be thinking, say, that you're the next person. But in my heart, I always believe that they get through God somewhere and He will help me go through it. After one year, my family ran away from Cambodia. We were for more than six months to go to Thailand. I was having 20 brothers and sisters, but we only four that so far. I was having my blind auntie. She used to hold me all the time to walk. But one day, they catch us. They started shooting. Then my auntie and myself fall down the ground. We started acting that we would not die. When we woke up, I couldn't find my mom and my pa. Ma. Ma. We spent some months in the bush. For us to survive, anything I found, me and my auntie went to eat it. One day, when I went to look for food, I went way in the bush. I didn't know the way to come back. I started crying on the tree. I looked up in the sky. Then I prayed to the true God. From the time I was small, they teach me to pray to Buddhas. But I knew, when I started praying, I make it clear that I would not pray to Buddhas. I will pray to the true God. So I say, true God, and you ready here 
Please help me. Because I'm really scared. I'm hungry. And I'm feeling cool. When I finished praying, I just started sleeping under the big tree. At the end, I reached the refugee camp in Thailand. I was happy to see my family again. We lived in the refugee camp in Thailand for almost 10 years. Then we moved to America. I never stopped looking for the true God. We tried to go to different, different churches, but we not understand anything there. For his name's sake. One day, when I came from school, I met one man in Hera. He asked me whether he can talk with me about God. I agree. I saw power in his hand, so I knew he was good. When he was talking to me, I tried hard to listen, but I was not understanding the thing he was saying. Do you understand? Then he started taking his time to talk. My name is Harold. He said, what are your name? I said, my name is Sote. Then he said, your name is Sote? My name is Harold. Call me Jehovah. That's the most high. That's God's I name. never knew God get name. Well, you understand? From that day, I never forget Jehovah's name. It stick in my heart that it's super glue. He right. gave me you his like phone number, number and, like and he said he would ask his wife, to come to me one day while I moved from the place I was living. Even though I now start saying that time, but I always used to pray to Jehovah. After I learned God's name, I went back to church. When the priest started preaching, he would just say, Heavenly hey, Father, he would not call Jehovah's name. So I put my hand up. Then I asked him, why when you pray, you can just say, Hey, on your father, you can't say, Hey, on your father, Jehovah. Why not you sing God's name? It's just something I do. So he said, God not force me to be here. If I want to go, I must go. When I want to stay, I must stay. So, since I knew that you sing Jehovah's name, I left from there. You're not going back again. So after some years, I tried to call Brother Hera, but nobody answered. So, so I leave me on the phone. I was praying they might remember me. After two weeks, Brother Hera came to my house. For that time, I used to work in the net and sleep in the day. He not gave up, he was always coming back. I will always pray to Jehovah, asking him for someone to come knock on my door. Finally, one day, I opened the door and saw him. I was surprised and I started crying. I was so happy to see him because that the man that showed me Jehovah's name. Then, I started studying with one sister and she helped me to know how to worship Jehovah the right way. To know that you get here in your father, who care about you, is important more than anything. It made me, I wanted to learn about him. I wanted to know about God, Google. Then I started asking questions. God is the one or not like it. When I go to the kingdom hall, I can hear Jehovah the plenty of time. I am Jehovah and there is no one else. Then I can say to myself, Yes, and I found the truth. I was baptized in 2013. My blind auntie, when myself in the bush together, still living today. Now that I able to talk to her about Jehovah, that real blessing, I'm too happy and I know how to say it. For Jehovah to be able to honor me and for him to help me to know him, and to know that they get you God, he named that Jehovah the real blessing. Sister Yuan can still remember the party that happened to she and her family because of the war. 
But now she got good hope for the future and she know her heavenly father Jehovah. They won't can make her heart to calm down. Sister Yuen happy that she's serving Jehovah with her husband and daughter. So how does this video help us to strengthen our own friendship with Jehovah? Sister Raffle, please. So for that sister, just learning Jehovah's name, she says it stick with her like super glue. She never forgot that name. Whenever she prays, she called Jehovah's name. So for me too, I know Jehovah. I know the kind of person he is. I know all the things he has done for me. I don't want to leave Jehovah for nothing. I want to stick with Jehovah no matter what happens. Very good. So let's conclude that answer with James 4 verse 8. James 4 verse 8. Sister Misa, please. Draw close to God and he will draw close to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hands, you indecisive ones. Very good. So as we serve Jehovah, we want to continue to draw ever more closer to Jehovah. Why? He's our creator. He's our heavenly father. More importantly, he causes us to become. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Tama Thuli, and uh, all uh, you who had shared in commenting. We certainly appreciate it. And this kind of brings our meeting to a close. So let's just see some of the things we are, that we learned today. So we know the answer to the question, why David called Jonathan his brother, isn't it? And that portion was brought out nicely. And from the video we just saw, we should never take for granted the truth that we know. We may take it for granted. Just knowing Jehovah's name is nothing to us, but it brought someone to the truth. It could be just one scripture. If we use it, you never know how far reaching it may be. So good thought to keep in mind, isn't it? Now, if you turn to 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 8 and 9, there's a question that we want to find an answer to next week. What thing we can learn from the way David acted when Jehovah was vexed with him? So keep that scripture in mind and do a little bit of research and see what, what we can learn next week. Just before we go to our concluding song and prayer, we have some announcement that we will want you to please listen as I read that for the benefit of us. This continuation of radio programs. We have all enjoyed the radio programs that broadcast public talks and other spiritual programs on 23 radio stations in our branch territory. Now that we have returned to in-person congregation meetings, there is no need to continue the radio program because the main purpose was to help publishers who were not able to join the congregation meetings. We are informing you that the last radio broadcast will be May the 29, 2022. If you know of others who have been enjoying the radio program, be sure to invite them to attend meeting at the Kingdom Hall. Please inform them of the present guideline for attending congregation meeting when we're telling them to come to the Kingdom Hall. Okay, so that's a one that we want to keep in mind. The next one, uh, annual items. The annual item for 2023 will be ready for download starting in October 2022. Publishers who want hard copy for these items can start putting in for the 2022 Watchtower and Awake Bound Warden, Examining the Scripture Daily 2023, and the Watchtower Publication Index 2022. Also, you can put in for the Braille editions of Examining the Scripture Daily if you will need it and if you can read Braille. Number two, Bethel Service. Baptist Christian 
BAFTA Christians who, sorry, BAFTA Christian who 19 years of age or older who want to work at Bethel or help with a theocratic construction project for a short time or long time must talk with the congregation secretary so that he can get instruction on how to submit the form. Besides that, those who apply must please watch the video making yourself available for better service and be honest in all things before they can submit the form to their elders. Number three, delay in printing public magazines. Printing the awake and the public edition watchtower were delayed for some months. In the meantime, please be using the publications you download on your tablet or phone and order hard publication of or issues of the magazine for few services that are available. So those are just some announcements to keep in mind and uh, we thank you. And this will now bring our meeting to a close by singing together song number two, Jehovah is your name based on Psalm 83 verse 18. And after the singing of that song,